In this section, we'll discuss the precession of a top in which uh, there is a weak torque. Here's our simplified top that we're going to consider. Remember, we've got our x, y, and z coordinate axes. Well, imagine that our top is spinning uh, primarily about an axis E3 hat, which is fixed to the body of the top. So remember, the top is going to precess around, and that means that this E3 hat vector is going to move as the top processes. So this is an example where we have a coordinate system in which we've evaluated the moment of inertia tensor to make it diagonal, but as a result, that means the basis vectors that describe that coordinate system, those are going to evolve with time as seen in an inertial frame, x, y, and z. Okay, So our top consists basically of a, of a thin disk uh, suspended above uh, by a sort of a long stick with a point at the bottom. The center of mass for this system is going to be a distance r from the pivot point, and so the gravitational force is going to act at that center of mass uh, with a lever arm r, and we're going to see that that will induce the small torque. Initially, the top is going to be uh, tilted at an angle to the z-axis of theta. Uh, we'll see that that tilt actually is going to remain a constant, but the direction in which the top tilt is going to change. That, that constitutes our precession. So let's look at the dynamical equations for the angular momentum and look at how the top's uh, precession proceeds. So here's our spinning top again. Uh, remember, we're going to define the E3 hat basis vector to point upward along uh, the rotation vector for our top. So we've got our top spinning around like this. And E3 represents the uh, vector that points parallel to the rotation vector. Uh, our moment of inertia tensor is going to look like this. So it's uh, got uh, lambda 1 in the xx component, lambda 2 in the yy, and lambda 3 in the zz component. Everything else here is 0. And for a top, the top is shaped in such a way that the moments lambda 1 and lambda 2 are actually equal. And as we discussed in previous sections, when you have two moments of inertia that are equal to one another, uh, that means that uh, you can choose the basis vectors that correspond to those moments of inertia essentially arbitrarily, as long as they're uh, at right angles to the third basis vector and at right angles to one another. And so in this case, I've drawn E1 vector, uh, E1 hat vector is pointing outward at a right angle to E3, and E2 pointing at a right angle to those other two. The direction of these vectors is not actually very important uh, in this case because we're not actually going to have any rotation about those axes. And so that we can calculate our angular uh, momentum vector, remember it's just going to be the uh, moment of inertia tensor as applied to the angular velocity vector. Here's our moment of inertia tensor as above. And we're going to assume that our angular velocity vector looks like this. So there's no component along the E1 direction. There's no component along the E2 direction. The only component we have is along the uh, E3 direction. Uh, and we're going to assume actually that those two uh, x and y components, sorry, e1 and e2 components, remain zero throughout uh, the dynamics of the problem. That corresponds to assuming that the torques due to gravity are, are weak. Uh, and we'll see actually in detail what that actually means and how that's borne out when we do the uh, analysis more fully. But for our purposes here, we're just going to assume that uh, the angular velocity vector looks like this. If the angular velocity vector looks like this, we get an angular momentum that looks like this. So it's just going to be uh, lambda 3 times omega 3 and all of the angular momentum points along the E3 hat direction. Okay, so again, we have our angular momentum vector, which looks like this. Now, we have a force acting in this system, gravity, and that will induce a net torque. And so that means that the time derivative of the angular momentum vector is non-zero. So L, dot, uh, L vector dot is going to be gamma vector. That's the torque. And that's going to be, in this case, R, so the distance from the pivot point up to the center of mass for the, for the top, crossed into uh, the top's weight, so mg vector. And so we can see if we cross r into mg, we get a torque, which in this case is going to point into the page. And so that means that our uh, gamma vector is going to be at a right angle to our angular momentum. So in other words, we have an angular momentum vector which points upward along the uh, E3 
hat direction, and it's going to change in a direction pointing into the page here. So that's L dot. You can't see it in this <laughs> diagram here, but it's L dot, this, this vector right here, pointing into the page. And so that means, again, that the L vector is going to change in a direction perpendicular to the L vector itself. And so what that means is uh, because L dot is perpendicular to L, that means that the magnitude of L remains a constant. And so it's only the direction of the angular momentum vector was going to change. And in other words, what that means is that uh, lambda 3 omega, that's going to be a constant. So again, for the torque that we're considering, uh, here's, sorry, here's the angular momentum vector. For the torque we're considering, it always points at a right angle to the angular momentum vector, and therefore uh, the magnitude of the angular momentum vector is a constant. And so the only thing that can change if the magnitude changes is the direction. And so we find that L uh, vector dot must be equal to this. In other words, that the direction in which the angular momentum the angular momentum vector points, that direction is going to change. So E3 is going to change. And it's going to change in a direction pointing in to the page. And so remember that our torque is R crossed into the weight of our top. And since uh, since the gravitational uh, acceleration always points along the z-hat direction, we can write this torque in this way. Excuse me, there's that. mg as a, as a um, scalar times z-hat with a minus sign up front because uh, the gravitational pull is downward along the z-hat direction. And you may recall from a previous chapter that if we're interested in the uh, time derivative of a basis vector as a result of rotation of our coordinate system, which of course as the top rotates around precesses and the L, the L angular momentum vector changes, the E3 basis vector is changing. Recall from a previous chapter that if we have the time derivative of one of our basis vectors as a result of rotation, that's the same thing as taking the rotation vector, whatever that rotation vector happens to be, and crossing it into basis vector itself. Okay, so again, writing the time derivative of our angular momentum vector as this. We set that equal to uh, the torque applied to the system. Now, uh, the r vector here um, is just going to be the distance, the physical distance from the pivot point to the center of mass, which is just some scalar r, and that r vector is going to point along the E3 hat direction, and so our vector can be written in this way. And so this means that my torque can be written as minus R E3 hat crossed into M G Z hat. Okay, and so setting these things equal, uh, here's the uh, angular momentum vector's time derivative, that's equal to the torque, uh, we can see that uh, we can rewrite E3 hat dot as the mass gravitational acceleration R over lambda 3, the moment of inertia about the third axis E3 hat, divided through by uh, the rotation rate about the E3 axis. Now remember, there's multiple rotations here. There's going to turn out to be a second rotation, which is the precession to the top. So... Uh, omega, this little omega, that's the rotation rate about the E3 axis only. About the E3 axis only, okay? And then we have, uh, for the rest of this equation, we have uh, z hat. So this is one term, and that's being crossed into E3. And so from our previous equation, what we see is since uh, we're interested in the time derivative of E3, and we know we can write the time derivative of the E3 basis vector, which results from a rotation, as the rotation vector, crossed into the basis vector, we can rewrite this as big omega crossed into E3. And so 
all of the stuff that shows up in this parentheses here, that corresponds to another rotation vector for the E3 hat basis vector. Okay, so as you think about this intuitively, uh, here's that uh, rotation vector that I just described, and so here's our E3 vector, here's what the uh, big omega vector looks like, and so this represents rotation of the E3 vector about the z hat direction. So in other words, E3 is going to execute rotation about the z hat direction. This angle, theta, is going to remain fixed, and so the, the top just precesses about the z hat direction. This is the uh, classic example of a precessing top that results from the gravitational torque. To develop an intuition uh, for exactly how this precession works, uh, imagine, for instance, that the um, distance from the pivot point to the center of mass uh, increased a lot. Then you can see that the rate of precession is going to go up quite a bit. And that's because the torque, due to the gravitational pull, is going to be really, really big. Now, in reality, once the torque from the gravitational pull gets really, really big, we have to start thinking about rotation ab about uh, the other two basis vectors, which we've ignored here. Um, so we have to keep in mind that all of this uh, analysis is predicated on the assumption that the torque is weak. But if, this, if the torque is weak enough, we can make, um, make the, the top just precess about the z-hat axis. We can see the precession rate is going to go up as the uh, distance from the pivot point to the center of mass goes up. Uh, other things that are interesting, if we make the rotation rate about uh, the E3 axis really big, we can see that the precession rate for the top is going to go down. And that makes sense. Basically, it's uh, at the rotation of the, of the top is quite large about E3. That means it's going to be very hard to change the direction of the angular momentum vector. In other words, the top is going to have a very large angular momentum, and it's going to be very difficult to change its direction for a given uh, torque. And we'll see uh, in the next section how to treat the more general case where the torques are not small uh, by developing Euler's equations. But this uh, processing top is a really important sort of paradigm for understanding motions of, of simple rotating systems in the case that there is a small torque.